Please welcome the incomparable Mr. Ernest Borgnine. three hours or four hours with him at lunch today and he warmed me out. This is the youngest 93 year old history in mankind. Uh, what uh, you know you had mentioned that we hadn't seen the film in 20 years and by the way well over that. Well over that. I, I thought the film was just terrific. It was moving, it was compelling and you were just moving. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, man, you like it, not tonight. <laughs> the story which uh, I found out is very historically accurate, and one of the things that we talked about was the real Lieutenant Petrosino, and you actually went back in, and uh, saw, went to the place where he met his No, wife. you know, I had the opportunity, because the New York Police Department, uh, I think it was a, a, 200 a 200th year, that uh, he had passed away, and or it was his birthday, one of the two, yeah. in this wonderful little town of Padula uh, in Sicily. And uh, the New York Police Department invited me to go along with them to celebrate uh, Giuseppe Petrosino's birth and death and whatever it was. And I couldn't go. Don uh, Gronit just killed me, uh, because I would have loved to have gone there to meet his, his what family that was left and everything else, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, I, I've always thought that he was the kind of a fellow that um, was like the fellow I played. I hope. Absolutely, absolutely, it was great. And, and he was a he, he was quite a gentleman. Uh, uh, he was a man, believe it or not. Uh, we didn't show it in the picture, but actually, when when he was uh, shot on the Piazza di Marina in Sicily in Palermo. Uh, the um, the mafia knew that he was there, but they didn't know who he was. And he went. He was going around dressed as a woman because he always uh, went by a different uh, kind of costumes and things Disguise. like that. So he was dressed as a woman this one night. And the mafia going around when in those days they used to have the the straw the straw ball. And the guns, they used to have them right outside, you know, hanging on to them. And uh, they went right around yelling, Petrosino! Petrosino! And he, evidently thinking of something else, turned around and said, Yes! <laughs> and they shot him full of holes. I'm sorry to say. Yeah. Years later, I'm making a picture in Palermo. And, uh, I came back and I was on my way back to New York and I stopped off to, uh, for a day or so in Palermo just to see what it was all about. And I said to this driver of mine, who always claimed, no, 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 we have nothing to do with the mafia. <laughs> and, uh, everybody says, my father's a mafioso, but you know, they're, they're, they're just talking. <laughs> oh yeah? <laughs> anyway, I said to him, I want to go see where Petrosino was shot. He said, oh, no, no, we don't have that around. I said, don't kid me. I said, I made the picture. I know that. <laughs> I know this guy. Yeah, I know. And he said, well, OK, I finally took me, you know. And we went over to the Piazza de Marina, and there were two fellas playing cards on a little tiny thing there. And they saw us coming, and they started to move. And said, no, 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 uh, hold it, hold it. Uh, this man is a, an artista, an artist, and uh, you know, an actor. And uh, he wanted to know where Petrosino was buried. Now they really picked up the stuff and started to go. <laughs> and I said, wait a momento. Uh, I just want to see where he's killed. And uh, they looked at me and they said, do say Ernesto Pornain? Uh, yes. Oh, but better, very come on. Come on with us. And they took me over to the spot where he was supposedly killed. And I stood on the spot. And my hair stood right up on end. Oh. Believe me, it was quite a thrill. And quite a, uh, I don't know, I just, uh, it gave me the shivers just to think about it. And um, uh, the poor man must have been one hell of a guy, I'll tell you, to, uh, to do what he did. 
-hmm. And he was sent over by both the King of Italy and, and uh, uh, Theodore Roosevelt because of all the work that he did in New York. He was almost instrumental in downing the mafia there. And uh, so there you go. It, uh, it was quite a, quite a thing. And um, I, I hope that you all liked the film because um, we made it in a very <laughs> we made it on, on, on short time and didn't take very long to do. And, and uh, although it went on for, it seemed like it go on forever. <laughs> <laughs> Allied allied artists were great great. Uh, I remember one time uh, he was having trouble. Uh, the director was having trouble with uh, the girl who played my wife, Zora Lampert. Zora Lampert and um, and Zora had a had a funny way of smiling. Uh, when she was actually crying. And you, <laughs> she smiled and you, and you say, no, no, you can't do that. You have to, you know, it's different to, to cry. <laughs> to cry. And, and, and so all, we all worked all afternoon one day and, and uh, you know, everybody was exasperated except, hey, we went, kept on doing it, kept on doing it, finally, the director said, okay, Dick Wilson, and he said, okay, that's enough for today. I said, whoa, wait a minute. He said, turn the camera around. I said, I'm still hot, want to go. And I said, I don't want to do it tomorrow, I want to do it now. He said, but you're, you're angry, you're this and that. I said, turn the damn camera around. <laughs> turn it around, and we shot the thing. Now the next day, Lucian <coughs> Ballard, our photographer never went to to, uh, to see the rushes. He said, "I got to go see this rush." <laughs> and he he went, and I stayed back there eating my lunch. And he came back, and he shook his he was shaking his head. Said, "I don't know how you do it, but boy, did you love that woman." <laughs> <laughs> Um, now, the black hand, uh, a lot of that seems like, uh, you know, ancient history, early American history. Not but ancient history at all, yeah. I'll tell you. Yeah, you, were, you had some personal experience. Uh, my father came home one day, and, and uh, I, I heard him discussing it with my mother about La Mano Nera, the black hand. This was in Connecticut? Where in you Connecticut. Were, yeah. and, and, you know, there's an awful lot of Italians living there in, Ita in, in, uh, in Connecticut, and so he came home and he had this, this, this thing about the black hand and let's hope we don't get it here because in case anything happens, you, you know, you can see what, what they did. And uh, they wanted retribution and this and that and the other thing and it was just terrible. And I was just a kid, I didn't know from Adam, but I knew something was wrong when they said La Mano Nera, the black hand. And for a long time, my father was, uh, was, he was afraid to go to work sometimes because of the fact that these people were so uh, vehement, uh, you know, they, they, they do all kinds of things to make, you, if, you, if you got a letter, you were dead. It's like, it's like in the movie. Yeah. yeah. Wow. It, it wasn't a pleasant time and uh, uh, being an Italian in those days because, it, believe me, uh, it, it uh, as much as we loved our country, we loved we loved our lives too, and uh, we, certainly we certainly didn't want to end up like that. You know?